okay, let's build our IP transport in the form of our underlay infrastructure that we're going to be putting in place. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and say config T and I'm going to say feature OSPF feature. We'll go ahead and enable PIM since we're going to be not using that and then we'll say feature from here. We'll go ahead and say interface VLAN so I can do SVIs. I'm just going to copy these features and go ahead and place them in every one of the other devices. So config T, config T, and configure and paste. All right, so there they are now in place. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a routing process. Router, OSPF, and we'll go ahead and call it underlay infra, and I'm going to assign it a router ID. Now the router ID that I'm going to use is going to be 18311101 slash, oops, sorry, no slash 32. And that's going to be also the address that I'm going to use for my loopback interfaces. So what I'll do is I'll say interface loopback zero. And I'm going to say IP address 18311101 slash 32. And I'm going to go ahead and enable the routing process. IP router OSPF underlay infra and we're going to put everything in area zero like we said. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my physical interfaces. So I'm going to go to interface ethernet 1, 1 to 2 and what I want to do first is I want to make certain that I change their state because right now they're broadcast interfaces. Now what I want to do is I'm going to change them to a medium of point to point. And what you'll notice here is it says that I can't do that because they are layer 3 interfaces by default and medium point to point can only be applied to the IP addressing. So it says can only be broadcast for a layer 2 interface. So currently it's a layer 2 interface. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say no switch port and then I'll say medium point to point. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say IP unnumbered and I want to use the loopback zero interface. Now just for clarity's sake, I'm going to go to that interface and I'm going to go ahead and write in a description. I'm going to say the description for this is going to be my RID, so it's going to be my router ID and it's also going to be my underlay interface. So in other words, that's going to be the interface that I'm going to use to form my OSPF neighbor relationships with. So I'll say interface E1, 1 to 2. And now all I'll do is I'll actually place that in the routing process. I'll just step arrow to it to keep from having to type it again. And sure enough, there we go. Now, let's go ahead and do the configuration for the other resources. So first of all, we'll create router OSPF underlay infra. The router ID will be 18311021. I'll go to interface loopback zero, IP address 18311021.102 slash 32, and I'm going to run it in the routing process. So I'll say route IP router OSPF underlay infra area zero 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 and also what I want to do is I'll go ahead and use that description again so I'll say description and we will say our RID and our underlay interface that's what we're using it for I'll go to interface Ethernet 1122. I will say no switch port. I will say medium point to point. I will say IP unnumbered and I want to use loopback zero as the IP address for both of these interfaces. And then what I'll do is run those in the routing process. And no shut. Let me make sure I no shut these interfaces over here. I have a bad habit of forgetting that. No shut. 
All right. So let's do the spines. So from spine 102's perspective, again, router, OSPF, underlay, infra, my router ID will be 1831201201. I will go to interface loopback zero. I will say description. And we will say uh, router ID and underlay interface. IP address 1831201201. Slash 32 IP router OSPF underlay infra area zero interface E1122. So that's going to be the same two interfaces. No switch port. We'll say medium point to point. We will also go so far as to say IP unnumbered loopback zero. And I'm going to run it in the routing process. And I will no shut. Let's go ahead and do 9K4, which is going to be spine 202. So router OSPF. We will say underlay infra router ID will be 18312022202 we'll go ahead and configure that under the loopback interface IP address 18312022202 slash 32 and IP router OSPF underlay infra area zero then we'll do the two physical interfaces interface ethernet one one two two no switch port medium point to point then what we'll do is we will go ahead and say IP unnumbered loop back zero and we'll run the routing process and then we'll no shut. Also, another thing I'm going to go ahead and do just to streamline things is I'm going to say IP OSPF network point to point on each of these interfaces. So we'll say IP OSPF network point to point. And where am I? Yeah, I'm in the range. So IP OSPF network point to point and IP OSPF network point to point. So at this particular juncture, we should actually be able to see neighbors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say terminal monitor just to see if everything is coming to the screen. Yes, it is. So from this particular scenario, I will say show IP OSPF neighbors. And what we'll see here is I have a neighbor with 201, but I don't have a neighbor with 202 yet. So let's see. And show. IP OSPF neighbors. So 201. So 202 has got a problem. So let's see. No shut. We did that already. Oh, routing process. I used the wrong name. So we'll come up here and say infra. Okay, show IP OSPF neighbors. Should have two neighbors. I've got one with uh, leaf 102. Nothing with 101 yet. There it is. So now looking at this, we should actually be able to see some things. So what we'll do is we'll say show. Let's just do a clear screen to get it off. And then what we'll do is show IP OSPF neighbors. And what we'll see here is, is that we have a neighbor adjacency with spine 201 and spine 202 and everything seems to be good to go there let's go ahead and try it from the perspective of leaf 2 show IP OSPF neighbors we should have two spine 101 
I'm sorry, spine 201 and spine 202. That's good to go. Uh, another thing I'm going to do just to make the show commands make a little bit more sense is that I'm going to come in and, and configure an IP host configuration. So I'm going to, to say IP host, we'll say leaf 101 is going to equal 18311101. We'll come up and say leaf 2 is going to be 102.102. We will say our spine 201 is going to equal 201.201. And I'll repeat this for 202 and just go ahead and say that's spine 202. And what I want to do is I'm going to copy this into all of my devices as well. Now, if this were iOS, when I execute the show IP OSPF neighbors command, I would actually see the DNS resolution based on these IP hosts. So 18312021201 would show up as spine 201. 202202 should show up as spine 202. Now, we want that same behavior in Nexus, but in order to do that, what I have to do is I have to tell the system to support name resolution. So I will say config T router OSPF and we'll say underlay infrastructure and I'll say name lookup. I'll say do show IP or do show CLI history unformatted. And I'm just going to grab that syntax and paste it into all of my devices also. Okay, so now let's see what happens. And show IP OSPF neighbors. We now see that it is actually resolving the name. So from the perspective of the spines, show IP OSPF neighbors, we should see that we have connectivity to the two leaves. So this makes it a little bit clearer, show IP OSPF neighbors and we have the capability of being able to determine what we're connected to by name, not by IP address. So again, it just makes things a little bit simpler. So what we're going to do is when we come back, we're going to have a discussion about exactly what's involved in connecting the host units such that they're going to ultimately be able to ping across this IP transport. Now we really need to focus on the mechanisms that are going to allow us to be able to get this reachability, but we'll entertain it step by step in subsequent videos. Until then, I'm Terry Vincent, and I'd like to thank you for learning Data Center with me.